Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the introductory econometrics course. We will solve the problems 5 to 8 today for Chapter 17, Limited Dependent Variable Models and Sample Selection Corrections. Let's find answers to problem 5. Let patterns be the number of patterns applied for by a firm during a given year. Assume that the conditional expectation of patterns given sales and IND is as follows. Sales is annual firm sales and IND is the total spending on research and development over the past 10 years. In part 1, how would you estimate the betas? Justify your answer by discussing the nature of patterns. We could estimate the patterns using the Poisson regression model. The dependent variable patterns is a count variable. It takes on non-negative integer values. It could be zero as well as small integer values. In part two, how do you interpret beta one? The expected value of patterns is an exponential function of the explanatory variables. If we take the log of the equation, we can see that beta 1 is the percentage change in the expected value of patterns, given a 1 percentage change in sales. In other words, beta 1 is the elasticity of the expected patterns with respect to sales. In part 3, find the partial effect of R&D on the conditional expected value of patents. Taking the first derivative of log expected patents with respect to R&D, we have beta 2 plus 2 times beta 3 times R and D. That is the partial effect of R and D on the log expected patents. It is sometimes called semi-elasticity of the expected patents with respect to R and D. The percentage change in the expected value of patents given a one unit increase in R and D. It is a function of R and D beta 2 plus 2 times beta 1 times I and D. Let's do problem 6. Consider a family saving function for the population of all families in the United States. Household size is household size, edu is years of education of the household head, and age is the age of the household head. Assume that the expected value of the conditional error term is zero. In part one, suppose that the sample includes only families whose head is over 25 years old. If we use OLS on such a sample, do we get unbiased estimators of the betas? Explain. First, it is a truncated sample because it includes only families with a head over 25 years old. Second, age is an exogenous explanatory variable in the model. The truncation is based on the exogenous explanatory variable age. So we have an exogenous sample selection. Or we can think of it this way. The sample selection is correlated with age, and age has been controlled in the model. So the OLS estimates are unbiased and consistent estimates for the entire population. In part 2, suppose our sample includes only married couples without children. Can we estimate all of the parameters in the saving equation? Which ones can we estimate? 
for all married couples without children. The family size is two. There is no variation in the variable household size, so we cannot estimate beta two. If there is a variation in the other explanatory variables, income, education, and age, we can estimate beta one, beta three, and beta four. In part three, suppose we exclude from our sample. Families that save more than twenty-five thousand dollars per year, thus OLS produce consistent estimators of the betas. No, the truncated sample is on the basis of the dependent variable, and it is an potential endogenous sample selection. The OLS estimates are likely biased and inconsistent for the population model. Let's do problem seven. Suppose we are hired by a university to study the factors that determine whether students admitted to the university actually come to the university. You are given a large random sample of students who were admitted the previous year. You have information on whether each student chose to attend, high school performance, family income. Financial aid offered, race, and geographic variables. Someone says to you, "Any analysis of that data will lead to biased results because it is not a random sample of all college applicants, but only those who apply to this university." What do you think of this criticism? We should have three groups of students in mind: the students who are admitted, the students who applied to this university, and the students who apply to any universities. First, we have a random sample of students who are admitted, so the OLS estimates are unbiased and consistent for the students who are admitted. If the students who were admitted to this university are the population of interest, the OLS method is valid. The dependent variable is whether the students actually comes to this university. We can employ the linear probability model, the probit model, or the logit model. Second. Suppose we want to estimate the model for all students who apply to this university, which is a larger group of students than those who are admitted. In that case, there is a potential endogenous sample selection problem. We should follow the Hackett method to correct the sample selection. In the first step, we estimate the selection equation of admission. Using all students who apply to this university, estimate a probit model of admission on all the exogenous variables that affect admission. Compute the probability of admission or the inverse mu ratio. In the second step, using the selected sample, that is the students who were admitted, run the original regression. With the inverse mu ratio as an additional explanatory variable, the OLS estimates will be consistent for the students who apply to this university. The population of interest in the second case is the students who applied to this university. Suppose the population of interest is all college applicants. Including those applying to other universities. In that case, we may consider one more selection equation for whether to apply to this university, or use the method in the second case. The population of interest matters when we estimate a model. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me. 
I hope I could see you soon in the computer exercises. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.